Let's talk about conditional logic, an important concept all over programming. What do I mean by conditional logic? We've learned about Booleans, right? We have true and we have false. And some of you might be wondering why they're so useful. And when it comes to conditional logic, Booleans are really, really important. For example, let's say we create a variable is old. And you know what? We're going to create a car that automatically detects if you can start the engine. Maybe if you're not old enough, the engine won't start and it won't let you drive. So that they make sure that this car is super safe and only people that are perhaps over 18 can drive it. So how can we code something like that? Let's assume Tesla has a new feature like this. Well, we'll have something like is old and we'll set this to true, right? Maybe we have something else. Maybe it checks the license to make sure that we have a license. So we can say is license. And then we can set it to true. Now, these could change true and false depending on the user and the driver. But when I talk about conditionals, this is what I mean. In Python, we can use the if keyword to say if some condition exists, and this is just me writing it, it doesn't exist. You can see that I get a red un underline with invalid syntax. But here we want to say a condition that evaluates to true or false. In our case, we can say, hey, if is old, which what does it evaluate to? Well, it evaluates to true. If that's true, then let's say print you are old enough to drive. Now, there's a few new things here. One, I've added a semicolon or a colon. And then you'll see here that the indentation is different. As a matter of fact, when I press enter after the colon, you see that it automatically gives me a space. This tells the Python interpreter, I'm going to do an if statement, a conditional operation. And if this happens to be true, run everything that's inside of here that has this indentation. And if I do something without the indentation, let's say print check check. This to the Python interpreter is like a completely new line. It is not part of this if block. And if you're using the REPL, you see over here, I get a little minus sign. If I click this, you see how it hides? Well, what it does is it's saying, hey, this is a code block over here. It's an entire thing in itself. But anything outside that is not indented, well, doesn't belong to it. So to a Python interpreter, it's going to say, I have this line, and then I have this line. Let me show you what I mean. If I run this program, I get you are old enough to drive. And then I also get check, check. But what if I say is old is now false? What do you think will happen? If I run this, I get check, check. Our Python interpreter is going to say, hey, set variable is old to false. Hey, set is licensed equals to true. And then it's going to go to line three. Nope, nothing there. I'm going to keep going. Line four, hey, if is old, is this true? No, if old is false. And the interpreter is going to say, okay, I'm only supposed to run this piece of code if this is true. Because this is now false, I'm just going to completely ignore what's underneath here and just go to the next line that has, well, no indentation. So it's going to print, check, check. And this is the power of conditionals. We're able to essentially skip lines. The interpreter doesn't even care what's in here because I just told my program to skip from line four to line six. How cool is that? So we learned that there's this if keyword, but there's also another thing we can use called else. And you'll notice here that I didn't add it to the indentation. 
And else, as the name suggests, simply says, hey, if this something is true, then do this. Otherwise, also else, do this. And again, you see that I've added the indentation. So try to guess what's about to happen in this program. If I click run, I get check, check, because it's saying, hey, is old? Is that true? Nope, it's not true. Okay, I'm going to completely ignore that. The interpreter sees else. Okay, well, this wasn't true, so I'm going to run. Whenever this evaluates to false, I'm going to always run print check, check. What if I change is old to now equal to true? What will happen next? Well, I get you are old enough to drive. Else only runs if the if block of code evaluates to false. Very, very cool. All right, let me ask you another question. What if I did print here? And let's change this to you are not of age. If I run this, is that what you expected? Well, I hope by now you agree that this is the expected behavior. Because is old is true, I'm going to print this. And then Python interpreter is going to say, well, this was true, so I'm going to completely ignore the else block and then just go to the next line. What's on line eight? nothing. So I'm going to go to line nine, and I'm going to print, okay, okay, okay. As you can see, we're now controlling the flow of our programs, where instead of going from one to nine, just line by line, we're now saying at line four, do some sort of check. And based on that, skip a few lines. Very, very cool. All right, there's one other thing I want to show you. And it's the L if. And I know this kind of looks weird, you would think that it'll be else if, but no, no, no. It's L if. And what do you think this does? Well, you use it in combination with if you say if something, if otherwise, else, if another condition, so let's say is licensed, then do another condition. So let's say print, you can drive now. Hmm. So let's go through this again. I'm going to say, is this person old enough? If that person is old enough and this evaluates to true, well, then I want you to run this. Otherwise, I want you to run this condition. Hey, is this true? No, if it's not true, then jump to else. So what will happen here? If I click run, we get true for the first conditional block right over here. So automatically Python interpreter is going to say, well, we just got true here. So I'm going to ignore this and ignore this and then print. Okay. Okay. But let's say that is old is now false. What will happen next? If I click run, this is false. So Python interpreter is going to say, nope, not going to care about this block. And I'm going to go, hey, else if a condition, hey, is this person licensed? Yep, they are. So I'm going to print, you can drive now and ignore else. So it works like this. What if both of these were false? Well, as you can imagine, the Python interpreter is going to ignore, it's going to run this, say, nope, this is false, this, nope, this is false. And then finally, it's going to run this. You see that else is a catch all that is, if none of these conditions are true, then we're just going to run this. So it's a backup in a sense, hey, if all things fail, then just do this. Very, very cool. Now, if you look at this program, you're thinking, hmm, this program doesn't really work that well, does it? I mean, we're checking if the person is old and if, if person is licensed, but shouldn't we check both? We want somebody who has a license and who's old enough to dry. Hmm, this is, uh, this is a buggy program. If we implement this in a Tesla, 
Well, we're going to get a lot of lawsuits, right? Because we can get somebody who's maybe licensed, but isn't old enough, which I guess doesn't make sense. But we can get somebody who is old enough, but never got their driver's license. And somehow we get access to the car and they can start the engine and drive. And oh, that's a that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. So how can we fix this? Hmm. You know what? The power is that this is an expression right? An expression, if you remember, is something that produces a value. And that that means that this doesn't have to, you know, just have true here, it could be an expression. So I could say, if is old, and is licensed, then I can do that. And this is something new that we haven't seen before the end. This is another keyword in Python. And in an upcoming video, we're going to talk about more of these keywords. But this should read like English, right? If is old and is licensed, then do this. So we can now remove the L if. And then here, both expressions need to evaluate to true. That is whatever happens here, this has to evaluate to true and this has to evaluate to true. And only when both are true, again, as hint states, then you're old enough to drive and you have a license. So that if I run this, well, I get an error, right? Because or not an error, but it goes into the else block because both of these are false. If only one of them is true, and I click run, you are not of age because both of these have to be true. If I click run, hey, all right, the car is starting, you can drive away with your Tesla. Okay, before I finish this video, because this is a lot, I want to just note one thing. That is the L if statement. The L if statement is really, really useful because when you have code like this, where you have an if statement and an else statement, usually you only see one of each. I mean, sure, in another part of the program, I could have another if statement and an if statement with another else statement inside of here. But usually, when you have this grouping together, you only see one if and one else, but you can have multiple L ifs. So I can have L if another condition here, and then I can have another L if another condition here, and you can have as many as you want. Eventually, the program is going to either evaluate one of these conditions to true, or it's going to go into the else block. But usually you follow this order. All right, that was a lot. Let's take a break and explore this topic a little bit more. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.